People say, what does that mean these days? Wasserman Media Group, what does that mean when you meet with a client, prospective client? What can we do for you? Well, uh, I always describe our business as a um, sports marketing business with um, really two kinds of clients. Um, today, we represent athletes, uh, 1,500 athletes in 30 sports around the world, by far the largest sports agent in the world. And we represent brands and properties on how they leverage their connections with the business of sports. And, and so our clients are consumer brands, properties, tournaments, events, rights holders uh, on that side of the business. And, and obviously, connecting with sports is uh, a unique and sometimes interesting um, and different proposition for them. Both well, content and distribution. Everyone used to say, give me the distribution. Now you've got the content seems to be, a, pardon, but the king. You can handle both, and technology eases both? No question. I mean, uh, what, what has happened in terms of the proliferation of content and these massive agri distribution platforms, not just sort of cable or, or satellite, but you know whether it's Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat, they've aggregated significant numbers of people uh, and they know a lot about them. Uh, and sports is the kind of content where you know exactly what people want. And so that marriage is, is very interesting and unique and, and potentially will be very valuable. Do you educate your athletes that this thing that they have in their pocket is a distribution channel? We do. Um, and I believe that today it's a distribution channel um, mostly focused around uh, awareness and engagement. Uh, I think in a very short order it will be a distribution platform that drives significant revenue for the athletes. How so? Well, I think the days of um, consumers buying directly from, from brands or athletes is upon us. Uh, and so we can take one of our athletes, and maybe there's an opportunity to have a different kind of relationship with a shoe company. Uh, and so maybe there's one royalty rate uh, for when the shoes are sold at Foot Locker or Dick's or in the Nike store. And there's another royalty rate when the shoes are sold directly through Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat as a means of the athlete connecting with their fans. And that's good for everybody and I, I think those opportunities are going to be significant and meaningful and, and we think we've got the caliber of athletes and the relationships uh, to help deliver that. What do you think about Rock Nation getting into the sports business? Look it's a big business uh, and uh, I always enjoy competition so there I wish them all the best. But the leagues certainly are partners now more than ever before the leagues and athletes are partners in the distribution. No question. Uh, you know, whether it's uh, Russell Westbrook or Anthony Davis on our behalf uh, as, as clients um, uh, posting highlights of their game or the NBA, it's all good for the business of basketball uh, and everyone's trying to grow that audience and, and grow that opportunity. And so everyone is working together in that effort. Is technology and what you do empowering athletes to become far more powerful? I mean, years ago, they just played on the court. But now they really seem to be owners, stakeholders. They are. Um, but first and foremost, they're players on the court. And if they don't excel uh, on the court and um, conduct themselves in a way that people um, respect off the court, um, the other stuff doesn't really matter. And so first and foremost, you know, Russell Westbrook's an all-star. Uh, he happens to be uh, an interesting person off the court, a, a wonderful person who's got this real interest in fashion, uh, and he expresses that on Instagram in an interesting way. And so the combination is what's truly unique. Then does every athlete not deserve the opportunity to be a brand? Everybody wants to be a brand right now, but not everybody's Russell. Correct. Uh, so all athletes are clearly capable of having interesting things to say and connect with fans, and some of that may be truly localized, right? Because sports in many ways is very local and those athletes are really important and relevant in many ways just locally and that's okay too because they can have a voice and a platform and opportunity to speak to the fans of that team in that market in a very specific way on an NBA team there's 12 or 13 athletes and and those all have an interesting perspective and there are all always fans of that team who want to hear from any of the players on that team. It's also the ultimate scalable opportunity though that you can reach a fan in China and India just as easily as Andrew Luck can reach somebody in Indianapolis. No question and and that's where at the high level, some of these athletes are going to see significant opportunity because for the first time they can not only connect with but understand and take advantage of, of that opportunity and monetize that fan base on a global basis. Will it change the nature of the league and athlete relationship? I mean, unions might say, forget about these categories that we have to promote. They have opt-outs in some of the smaller categories, but an athlete might say, I don't choose to do your brand. I want to do my own brands. I want my own deals. Forget about a group license. Um, no, I, look, I think... That probably happens more at the team level than the league level, right? Athletes aren't necessarily bound to do um, league sponsors, but in many cases they are connected with local team sponsors. But even the biggest athletes today aren't sort of um, guaranteed inclusion in those deals. So 
I don't, I don't think that's a huge issue. I think athletes will just become marketable in their own right and, and create opportunities, and hopefully that helps the business of the teams and the leagues at the same time. Are you going to bring the Olympics to L.A.? <laughs> no, that decision, unfortunately, <laughs> has been made. And, uh, um, Not uh, now, ultimately. Is it, does it, does it, do you, is it still a goal for you? No, look, it was as much as I enjoyed the, the process. Uh, you know, our mayor, Eric Garcetti, asked me to help the effort. We, uh, we fought hard for six months. And frankly, the one thing I, I told the mayor when we started and the one thing we could never overcome is that we've had it twice. Um, so the one thing L.A. couldn't be was a new Olympic city. I thought we had a truly unique uh, opportunity, uh, a truly um, different approach to hosting and managing and executing the Olympics. But ultimately, the Olympic Committee, and, and it was their decision, uh, decided they wanted to try something new and, and take that effort to the world stage. And I wish them nothing but the best.